scary barbie what a name it is scary barbie something very scary something very uh, disastrous happening but what is it exactly this is one of the biggest cosmic explosion ever observed so uh, what do we have to understand in this particular particular thing what is a uh, cosmic explosion why this particular thing happens why do we need to observe that what are the results of these explosion that is what that is all that we are going to cover in this particular topic let's see so it says that astronomers have identified a very big explosion a giant ball of fire that has been affectionately nicknamed scary barbie all right so comparisons have been indicate that this this is sometimes you know 100 times larger than our solar system what a comparison our solar system is huge and it is more than 100 times larger right uh, most of the supernova they last for few months this has been there for a long long time more than 3 years that is something there so it's very huge right and uh, it has remarkable uh, longevity longevity so to study these events with this these events are very special because scientists can get a lot of data about the universe to understand how it is functioning uh, from where where life is where uh, you know all those fundamental questions which are yet to be answered uh, these events when we observe them they become the basis of answering those particular questions let's have a look so uh, to understand everything the basic fundamental is the life cycle of a star So supernova is happening as we saw. This is the one of the largest supernova, right? So let's see what exactly these terms are. You must have heard about terms like red giant, white dwarf, supernova, neutron star, pulsars, magnetars. All these things you must have heard. Let's have a look at exactly what are what are all these things. So just like humans, just like humans, even stars have a life cycle. So this is the beginning. In beginning, they are like a cloudy patch, right? then there is a burning phase which is a youthful phase right when they have lot of energy and then there is a old phase so what happens is that let's say in the universe this is the area in which you know dust various elements various particles are all scattered they are all scattered then there is a trigger all right there is a trigger so some kind of trigger will uh, uh, what will happen is that some portion of this or maybe this entire portion would start compressing getting compressed would start coming together right and when they start coming together they might form a cloudy patch as we can see over here this is the beginning of it there has to be a trigger then some kind of accretion is happening now when this process of accretion goes on isn't it so this might become this might turn into some kind of a cosmic event right so depending on you know the uh, now when we compare this particular thing whatever is getting formed with the size or you know mass of the sun mass of our sun right so if this particular thing what is getting formed when they are coming together so lot of temperature and pressure is getting build up uh, chemical reactions are going to happen in that temperature and pressure you know and something will be formed right so if this particular thing which is getting formed is less than uh, the 0.5 of the solar mass that we have right so ultimately it will end up as a red dwarf so red dwarf is a you know very uh, uh, just like sun it provides a lot of heat red dwarf will not have that much amount of heat it's uh, comparatively very very cool right so red dwarf is a kind of a uh, uh, kind uh, kind of a star only which is existing but it is very weak right in terms of our sun so uh, these things so this is the process so when when they are going together that is in the youthful age they are burning lot of fuels getting much for example our own star it's in the youthful age okay something has happened the star has collided uh, the the collision has happened right accretion is happening and right now sun is burning lot of fuel is getting lot of fuel is getting burned so at one point of time when it will go to the end stage when all the fuel will be gone then you know it will convert into some uh, either in uh, Yeah, our star, our sun will convert into red giant. Okay, if something was less than zero point five of the solar mass, it will convert into red dwarf, right? If now, what is white dwarf? <coughs> what is white dwarf? So, if something had the solar mass of one point four, one point four times of our sun mass, okay, if something is less than that, then it will form a white dwarf, right? But it and it will be stable, so it will stay uh, uh, for a quite long time as white dwarf. but something if it is more than 1.4 if the white dwarf is more than 1.4 times the mass of the sun it will be unstable it will be what it will be unstable all right so this particular white dwarf will go for a explosion and it will form into something else depending on the situations right so that is what is there 
So in uh, starting is with the cloud, then we have a creation coming together in which they will form the, the burning phase, the youthful phase, right? The sun is there in the youthful phase right now and then the ending phase. So in the end phase, these things will happen. Okay. So uh, uh, when, when a supernova is going to happen, when the starting thing, when the starting thing is within the mass of 8 to 20 solar masses, when it is as big as 8 times the sun or you know 20 times till 20 times the sun. So when this is there, then a supernova will happen at the end of it when, when all the fuels will be gone. Okay. So why dwarf will be like, you know, uh, when fuel will be gone, it will start expanding, right? Uh, and then when it will leave the outer layer, a white dwarf will be found. found. But then when uh, what will happen so what will happen in supernova because there is so much amount of mass which is coming together right so much mass and in very small radius there will be a blast so this blast will be a supernova if the uh, if the mass of the sun or if the mass of the uh, star that we're talking about is between 8 to 25 right then what exactly it will form in terms of 8 to 25 a neutron star will be formed but if the mass was more than 25 of solar masses a black hole will be formed okay that is there so these are the these are the you know ranges in which different activities will form different different phenomena will happen then we have the pulsars so pulsars are a type of neutron stars only but they have a strong you know uh, rotating thing rotating magnetic thing within them so when when we have a, when we have a rotational when the when the pulsars are rotating at a very high speed when the when the neutron stars are rotating at a very high speed the center of it are rotating at a very high speed they become a pulsar so it's a kind of rotating neutron star would be called as pulsars okay and those neutron star which are going to have huge amount of magnetic property huge amount of uh, magnetism right that is that will be known as magnetar all right so have you understood this so every star or every every phenomena that we uh, see over there it has a beginning it has a youthful phase or the mid, uh, middle phase and then it has the end phase so depending on uh, you know the mass of the uh, of of the starting thing the accretion which is happening these things are going to happen all right now let's have with the help of figure let's have a look at it so just look at red dwarf this is you know mostly red uh, mostly red and you know uh, less uh, less warm or you know, less heated up in comparison to our own star then red giant is formed when you know uh, the mass is less than uh, 0.5 or, or is between 0 0.5 to, uh, uh, to 8 solar masses right so red giant will be formed now when the red giant will form and then you know it will give up the outer layer uh, the white dwarf will form right supernova will form when the mass is from 8 to 20 a supernova explosion will happen this explosion will lead to neutron star if the mass is from 8 to 20 right and it will lead to a black hole if the mass is uh, more than 25 right that is what is happening the pulsars are the rotating neutron stars and magnetars are those neutron stars which have huge amount of magnetic property huge amount of magnetism all right let's move ahead now what is the importance of observing these things Right, uh, observing the phenomena of supernova, let's say, or neutron stars, or the light which is thrown out of them. The the importance is that importance we get to know about the components. What is the universe made up of? The raw materials of the universe, isn't it? Won't we understand that what are the elements, what are the various gases, what are the dust particles, and all those things? We will understand about these things. We will also understand about you know the physical processes about the physical processes which is going on right that is something which you are going to understand isn't it then we will understand about various questions like uh, how life formed isn't it on the earth Wh uh, what exactly uh, why exactly universe is expanding various questions about about universe isn't it what is the what is the main phenomenon mean you know uh, the reason behind all these things all these things we are going to observe right the various components which are there what kind of energy systems are there everything can be or can be understood with the help of observing these things that is why we keep on observing these things in uh, in the field of astronomy now that this particular uh, topic was all about you know observing it with the help of refit and its functioning right so what is refit is the recommender engine for uh, intelligent transient tracking so what is what are transient phenomena so this particular thing the ai engine called refit is tracking the transient phenomena so what are transient phenomena for example a, a supernova so this particular supernova right this particular supernova is you know it happens uh, uh, for some time and then it is gone so you know there is a kind of frequency now when it will blast there is a lot of a lot of uh, light lot of energy and everything and at some after some point of time it will be gone from the universe 
So if one particular satellite or one particular telescope or whatever is observing these things, right, observing these blinks in the sky, right? Some kind of a, a burst, uh, some kind of neutron stars are coming together, burst happens, and then it's gone. So these are transient phenomena which are happening for some time and then you know they change their behavior, right? So if we have various systems observing it, right? So this particular AI engine will have the data of whatever is happening. And with the help of this data, it will be able to predict that which portion of the sky we have to observe, which portion of the sky we have to observe for better data, for better understanding, right? Otherwise, this is something which humans had to do. Ki where should we observe? Where should we focus our mind, right? Otherwise, uh, but in when we have AI, so this AI can observe the AI can you know analyze the data from various observers which are there in the uh, there in the space. We have various telescopes, we have various satellites, uh, everything, right? They will observe, put the data, and this AI system will analyze and tell us ki what events are happening and what exactly has to be observed now. So that is why we are using this particular AI engine, right? Which is going to observation from different telescopes around the world, and it will improve our observational power, right? That is there. Then what are the reasons behind the cosmic explosion? This biggest cos cosmic explosion, there are so many reasons, right? So explosion can happen when things, you know, are coming together. Then also a supernova can happen. And it can also happen when they are getting ripped apart. Okay, that is also when a supernova can happen. So here the supernova is happening because of the uh, event called uh, spaghettification. So what happens is that you have, let's say, a black hole. Okay, this is a black hole. All right. And when any kind of star or any kind of body is coming near to this black hole, because it has huge amount of gravity, huge amount of gravitational force, it will pull it. And this, this thing will start getting spread. Right. And at one point of time, it will be ripped apart because of the gravitational force of the black hole. And this entire process is known as is figurification. And that is the reason behind such a huge amount of uh, explosion that we have seen uh, in this particular topic, right? The black hole pulled a star and ripped it apart. That's the only thing that we have to understand from this particular topic, okay? Mm -hmm.